Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the toast and happy Friday. Oh, we yeah. did it. We did it. Oh, we, we made it. Things we did. It. It that Friday we did this week. What number week of the year do you think it is? Maybe. Oh, like, I love this game. Maybe like thirty six. Yeah, I was gonna say thirty three. That feels is that like low. a fact that you can look up. I don't know if anybody tracks this like we do. I don't think anybody is quite as invested in the days, weeks, and months of the year as we are. I'm just like invested in, in getting into the holiday season. It's the thirty seventh. Wow. wow, I literally guessed thirty six. Wow. 37th week, done and dusted. Done and dusted, bitch. Things we did the 37th week. Watch me did do you 38. Lie? We'll see about that. We watch, will definitely see about watch that. Watch this space. What's that mean? Oh my God, that's like what the kids say when they're about to like do something just great. Like when greatness is coming, they say, watch this space. Oh, so like, you know, before I do a cartwheel, I should say, watch this space. Yeah, or like, if mm -hmm. you've got big things brewing, big things coming, like working on a big pro secret project, like watch this space. Okay, watch this space. We do have a lot. In terms of, you know, short term, we have a lot going on today. We've got Queenie and Weenie of the Week, the Fast Five Stories. We both caught up on Tell Me Lies. And then a little bit bigger picture, you know, long term, watch this space. We are coming up on the weekend, which is fabulous. And then after the weekend comes another week of work. Some would say the 38th. And we have a guest episode that we recorded this week that we're going to release next week that was so fabulous. It is the first time uh, these, this guest has sat down these for a guests. podcast interview. This, these guests have sat down for a podcast interview. And let me tell you, it didn't disappoint. Yeah, it was really great. So that will be coming out on the 38th week of the year. True. Oh, it's to say, watch this space, my friends. I also caught up on Secret Lives of Mormon Wives last night. I have one more episode left, and things have really reached a, fe a fever pitch. Have you gotten to Vegas yet? No, but uh, like everybody spoiled so much for me, and I'm grateful because seriously, like I need to talk about it now. You're telling me that Jen is paying for her husband's medical school with her influencer money because the money that his parents gave him for medical school, he gambled away because he has a gambling problem. Right, and then she cool. went to Vegas with her girls to do her work and film her show and do her mom talks so she can continue to pay for everything that he does, and he needed to come along too, even though it's a girl's trip and the only other man coming was a man whose partner is 37 weeks pregnant and could give birth but Zach needed to come too because he has a gambling addiction but because he has no money because he gambled it all away and he's in medical school his generous wife gave him an allowance of $2,500 for him to gamble so he goes to Vegas with her and ruins their trip and gambles the night away while also berating her yelling at her for going to Chippendales with the girls to do her job and that thing right. that's paying for everything else right so calling her a terrible mother telling her he's going to divorce <gasps> her telling her he's going to take the kids to his mom's house that she is a bad person with bad values all because she stepped into the Chippendales establishment and she left before the show even started because he was making her so miserable that's oh what I need she's to tell like, you. Oh my God. Okay. Like, hate you. Hate so much. And I've been seeing like a lot of hatred being sent his way. And usually I'm not one to like, you know, we should not send people hate. But like, this is the type of person who needs it. Like, dead ass. Dead ass. I mean, they're still together and they're obviously working on things. They have two small children. Like, I understand. And then they're also like extremely traditional. I understand why like, oh, you yelled at me. Like, divorce isn't like the first option for her of course um but I do hope I think this show will like give her a lot of power and confidence and I do hope like she's able to in some way like use that to change the dynamic of her marriage because she's treated anyone would be treated so unfairly in this situation but when you put into context that she is the breadwinner like I'm sorry give me your allowance back well, by the way, giving somebody an allowance with a gambling addition, that's just like a bad call on her She point, just like wanted on to make part. him happy and he hadn't gambled in six months. And I think she like her whole life is just like trying to appease this like narcissist, which she said. No, for sure. He has for sure. But like you have to think about gambling like, OK, this your alcoholic husband has, has, hasn't had a drink in six months. Let's celebrate with a drink. Like that's not how it works. Yeah. But I, I know what you mean. Um, I could also see, I hope, I, you know, when we talk about this a lot, how these reality shows about like traditional women often change the lives of and marriages of those women for the better because they have this sense of independence. They're making their own money. A lot of times they start out earning their husbands. But I do think that it could have, it, like that could be one outcome or her husband could say, you can't do the show anymore. Like I'll be really but interested they need to see if she comes show. back. How is he going to go through medical? Like, he really has, like, no leg to stand on, yet he thinks he calls the shots. That's wild right. to me. Those are the craziest people. Right. People with, like, seriously no, 
Alexis Hannah, and they've got nerve. And he's like yelling at her, berating her, saying the nastiest things you could say about a person while also asking for money. You on might want to try with a little sweetness. It's also crazy when people act this way, like on camera, because everybody's putting on, right? So this is like a front facing version of himself. Most of it happened over text, text and phone call, which she shared like bits and pieces. So we got the story, but it's not, no, he wasn't saying these things with a camera in okay. his face. Okay. That would be even crazier. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, and then also we watched Tell Me Lies. There was only one episode. So I guess they dropped two episodes and now we're like living life like it's week 2007 and we're watching one episode a week. That's okay. Because last night it took me a while to get through the episode. Just like things kept coming up. And by the end, like I felt like I'd been watching it for a long time and I was like excited for next week. But I also was excited to get into Secret Lives. So I was okay. But I am sat on Hulu right now. Everything oh, I'm I was just going to say right that. Now. Uh, me as well, because Desperate Housewives Des is also on Hulu. Yep. Desperate Housewives, Mom Talk, and uh, Tell, me Tell Me Lies. I agree. I feel like we're always saying how like certain streamers go through seasons. And recently, like Max, I feel like was coming off of a big one. Yeah. And Hulu's kind of having a moment. It is, at least for us. Yeah. So that's exciting episode, to not have to switch platforms. The episode of Tell Me Lies like, wasn't like crazy. I don't think like that much happened. I think it was one of those episodes where they're just sort of laying the groundwork. And there was also like a big chunk of episode um, at the wedding, like in the future. Mm -hmm. And I find the future scenes to be like really boring. Yeah, I enjoy, I just enjoy it. Like I'm not watching being like not enough is happening or whatever. Like I'm just very invested. I feel oh, I'm so, critical. I feel so like deeply when things happen, like that conversation with Pippa and Wrigley in the dining hall at, at the dinner yeah. time, not when she chewed his friends out for lunch, but when yeah. he came over and apologized at dinner, like I seriously wanted to start crying and I, I wanted both of them to start crying. I know, there's like so much sadness in this show. It's like really dark. Yeah, like everyone's going through a personal struggle and then it's like when someone else is struggling with something and so are you and they're not there for you, like that makes you sink even deeper. Like that's what happens, is what's with happening Macy. with like Macy and her friends right that's now. That's what happened with all the girls. Like they're all dealing with things that are like really heavy. Yeah. And they can't be there for one another. So they all keep like spiraling more. Yeah, but like, I'm sorry, Macy, like people have a lot going on right now. Like I know you broke up with your boyfriend and that was sad when it was the only thing that was happening. But like, there's other things that are more serious happening now. 1000%. <laughs> and you know what? I stand and I ship her and the teacher. So you know what? I'm all for it. I think Macy's having a real, a real day. I like don't ship them. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just like so like rules oriented where I'm like, stay away. Don't. Yeah. This is trouble. And for what? You guys don't even like know or like each other. You're not even in his class. You would never see him again. Like you literally no, just like. For the, for the story. No, she, for the experience. she like walked into temptation. It's not like she could not avoid him. She oh. literally banged down the door of temptation. 1000%. I think that's like supposed to be like clear like she is having some sort of crisis because of her breakup and so she's just doing and up until now we've known her as like a really like good girl with a good head on her shoulders and like she cares about her classes and her family and her friends and that's like that's what means a lot to her so I think that we're supposed to be like oh my god no the good girl's gone bad yeah but like at least with Lucy it's like if Steven never bothered her again like she wouldn't go looking for him you know she's not looking for trouble but he yeah. keeps coming like she can't avoid him yeah that's like the she's, difference she's she's tough to watch who lucy when she's being good she's so good but she's seriously two different people and when you think about all the skeletons in her closet it's like girl you should just transfer like you'll never come back from these things like you wrote the letter you slept with cheated Evan. like it's time to transfer come clean and transfer and then i had have a normal life I too had the thought that she should transfer, <laughs> mostly because of the cheating thing. Like, if 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 they found, I don't know if they do find out, but if and when they do, just run. I don't think they do. I think in present times they're going to find out. I don't think they ever find out in the last seven years. But yeah, like I know she wants to be a good person, but you have to start by like making amends. And so she needs to admit to Rayleigh that she wrote the letter. She needs to admit it to Pippa. She needs to tell Rayleigh like that's why he's off the team. Um, and that's why her his brother doesn't speak to him. And Brie, I slept with your boyfriend and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna head out. <laughs> I'm just headed to Colgate. I got a transfer, a second year transfer. Yeah. Have a good yeah. day everyone. Have a, like that's the only way to move forward. Otherwise she's stuck living like in this cycle and in the past. And that's what we see in 2015 because like- No, she, like, yeah, because you look at the future. Transfer. 
her life sucks. She's so Miz. And yeah, if she just went to, like, she, like, this, these 10 people are her whole universe for 10 years. And like, I don't know if it occurred to her that she seriously could go to college and like make new friends. Yeah. She needs a clean slate of tabula rasa. And that can't happen at Baird. No, it can't. Um, also, I'm kind of going through something. Oh, okay. I talked to you about this a little bit last night and I spoke about it on my Instagram story, so I won't berate everyone, but I just, I kind of feel this sense of duty. D-O-D-Y or D-U-T-Y? I'm glad you asked. D-U-T-Y. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm sad. To talk about my experience with the Frame TV. Okay. So, I got a Frame TV. Now, if you aren't familiar, uh, it's like a special TV that Samsung came out with a couple of years ago that like revolutionized the game for people who like don't want to look at like an ugly TV on their wall. They'd rather have a piece of art. Well, the Samsung frame is so special. It's non-reflective and it, and it basically is a screensaver when you're not watching it that looks like you can have like a Monet on your wall. Mm -hmm. and I was like, you know what? I was really having this issue in my living room with nowhere to put my TV. So I'm like, you know what? We'll get a little frame, not huge. And we'll, we'll have art. Like, I had a piece of art, and I just moved the art and put the frame. Yeah. I'm, like, swapping but one art for another. Should be pargy. I have so much to say. I got a 43-inch TV. So small, Which is right? small, like, I guess. You guys, it I was so expensive. I saw a picture expensive. of it. You guys, it was so expensive. I'm, like, ashamed. And, like, TVs, like, these days, you can get a TV for cheap. Like, they're really, and they're still good quality. Yeah, like, you can really get a really believe, nice TV a couple hundred dollars. I don't believe in, like, needing 4K. The TV in my bedroom is, like, seriously 11 years old. And it's amazing. I don't believe in. But you know what? I got on board with the hype train. And boy, am I regretting it. Here's what they don't tell you about the Samsung frame. The frame is sold separately. So I have a, a TV on my wall. I have a black t Like, I'm, I'm so confused. It's literally a TV. So then you have to get a frame. Which I did, but like, I thought the whole point of buying this expensive TV was that it doesn't look like a TV. But the thing that doesn't make it look like a TV is sold separately. But you also said like the non-reflective screen saving yeah. piece. I want to say, I put on the art last night, it looked like a TV. It looked like a screen. It didn't reflect. Yeah, it's not reflective, but it wasn't that special. So now I understand why people just get frames made, like actual frames for yeah. their just regular televisions. And then Duh. they leave the screen black? Black or you can like go to YouTube and put on uh, an art. Yeah. And here's the other thing they don't tell you about the Samsung Frame TV. The art is not included. You have to there, pay for there it. There is free art, but you get what you pay for. And The free art yeah. is putting the free in art. Yeah, no, like, it's certainly what you pay for. If so you want I went, like the greats, you have to pay. I went on pay. the art thing and they had like a little um, gallery from the Met. I'm like, oh, this is fabulous. I get it. Like, this is really cool. I chose this gorgeous Monet, you know, Lily's. They're like, here's your 30 second free trial. Four ninety nine a month if you want it. Now I have been told like a lot of hacks. You know, you can download art illegally and just like upload it as a photo. Like I like I know. Um, I didn't spend all this money to be doing back alley shit. You know, mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people sit on you know where I sat for a while. Should I get the frame? Should I get the frame? I'm here to tell you you shouldn't. Should you get a frame for your old ass TV? Yes. Well, let me just say, because I also have a frame, and since we're having a referendum on the frame, I will say that I love my frame. Um, I actually don't even optimize it, because I keep, like, every time I go to put on a nice piece of art, I pick one, and then it still goes back to, like, the same thing I've been looking at for two years. And I Screensaver. And I, Yours and is I, literally like a screensaver. Yeah, it is a screensaver. And then I just, like, forget about it, and I forget that I have a frame. So that's kind of, like, a me problem that I haven't optimized it. But I love it so much. I was just saying to Claudia, I want a frame for my bedroom. Like... I love the way that it looks, even if it doesn't look like an actual Monet, like we're at the Met, duh, we're not. It's better looking than a television. I just think in this day and age, the fact that there's not like a solve for televisions, like they're really so ugly and all your furniture is like directed at it. You, you, you yeah. really like, you, you design your whole apartment or house based on where the TV goes in each mm -hmm. room. It's insane. So the fact that there hasn't been some sort of like, I want like a collapsible TV that like folds in half and I could just put it in the drawer, you know? Like the fact that we haven't evolved in, in terms of like either hiding or beautifying the television, the best we have is the frame. Well, I've seen the best and I'm here to tell you, it's not that great. I think it's, it, I think it's as advertised. Maybe no, you have like I don't really think it is. high expectations. I but did. I feel like I got mine at a point where it's like, this can't be real, can it? Like it really is not gonna look like a TV. Like I was still, disbelieving so whatever it did do I was like hey that's that's better but you were expecting the Met 
Well, for the price, I was, yeah, I was expecting that. And your expectations were not met. That they were not. However, just think about what that wall would have looked like in your house if it was just like a black TV. And because of the size of it, like. Jackie, that's literally what it looks like. It's a black TV. And you know what? Okay, I understand. Like, and people have really beautiful The picture frames. you sent me was nice. They get like beautiful, like custom bezel. And that I understand maybe you, you, you purchase extra. But the fact that the baseline TVs don't come with like a little gold frame or white, it's disgraceful. Like seriously, Samsung, do better. In this economy, it's it's disrespectful. In I'm this sorry, economy, like Samsung's got to meet their needs too. Like frames Please, Sa don't Samsung grow on trees. will survive. And they, they do actually. They're made of wood. And I think that I would be a much more endeared consumer to Samsung if they took this feedback. Because everyone I, I, I was on Instagram, they were like, no, I know. I was freaking out when I found out too. I think it would behoove them. Seriously, it would go a long way with the, with the consumer. I, like, I am not endeared to ever okay, buy what another if there was like, Samsung What if there was TV. a free frame that comes with the frame TV, but it's not like the Garji one? And you still no, would of have course. to pay more If I want like a one. crazy no, bezel. No, not crazy. Like, like the t say that it comes with a standard gold. white white frame. Fine. But you wanted the, the teak one, the wood one, and you still had to pay for that. That would have been fine by you? It would have been fine by me, but I also think the price of frames is absurd. It's four pieces of metal that all get uh, magnetically held together, and it's over $100. Like, I'm sorry, that should be 25 bucks. But you could get one on Etsy, you said. They're still very expensive on Etsy, but they're less than like the, the classic, like the OG ones. I'm just saying this whole system is disgusting. It's designed to really exploit the American consumer. And I'm speaking on behalf of consumers everywhere. Like, I've had enough. So are you going to return the TV? No, it's already like mounted and everything. Mm. Okay. And it's better than like the regular TV, but it's not great. Okay. Well, hopefully it'll grow on you. I think once I get like a frame on it, it'll it'll change my whole life. No, see, that's the problem. It's not going to change your whole life. And the expectations, really? the expectations are too high. So then when it doesn't change your life, you're like, this is terrible. Like, it'll be, it'll be nice and, and not like an eyesore. That's... That's the expectation. Every time I get something new in my life, whether it's big or small, like a new pair of clothing, a new, like seriously, like a new pair of tights, I'm like, oh my God, my life is going to be changed. My wardrobe is going to be changed. And sometimes like you do get a new bag or something that like really changes your day to day. Yeah. But for the most part, like I really, I do, you're right. Like I have high expectations for the most mundane random things. Yeah. And it's hard to meet those. And then yeah. you're disappointed. So it's better to, to start lower, I find. <sighs> Sorry. To be me. Sorry to burst your bubble. Well, let's not let's not go down a dark hole. It's so easy. Also, oh, like, was that the tell me lies recap? Because I don't think I had much yes. more to say. Me too. And I figured we have like Queenie and Weenie at the end. I really do like to wrap yeah. up the show. I, the, I do feel bad for anybody who like doesn't watch or got spoiled. Um, nothing happened. We didn't spoil anything. My B. <laughs> we literally didn't spoil anything. Yeah, that was the recap, like of Secret Lives and of our that was our Hulu recap because I love to end the week on Queenie and Weenie and I have really good ones. Very male dominated week for Queenie and Weenie this week, for mm. me at least. Ooh, love that. Yeah. Well, let's get into the past five stories, shall we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because now without further ado, do, 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 it is time for the past five stories that you need to know. And the fast five stories that you need to know are brought to you by Prolon. Did you know that there's a nutrition plan that doesn't just help you lose weight, but actually has been shown to lower your biological age score? It's called Prolon by El Nutra, and here's the craziest part. It's a fast that includes food. So introducing Prolon, a revolutionary plant-based nutrition program that nourishes your body while making cells believe that they're fasting. It's researched and developed for decades at the University of Southern California Longevity Institute, and it's backed by leading U.S. medical centers. Prolon helps promote healthy blood sugar, supports cardiovascular health, and reduces abdominal fat. Prolon is not a diet. It is science. It's based on Nobel Prize winning discoveries in medicine, and all of it starts with their five-day program. It includes snacks, soups, beverages, and they are all designed to keep your body in a state of fasting while not actually fasting because like, who can do that except Yolanda? So it's really unlike anything you've ever experienced. If you're not one for crazy diets and fads and you've never tried a fast of any kind, Prolon by El Nutra doesn't just help you lose weight. It can also help you lower your biological score so there's been a lot of hype. I feel like a lot of people on social media are always talking about Prolon. I feel like celebrities love it too. Um, so this might be the sign that you need to, to 
check it out because when most of us think about fasting we think about being hungry and exhausted instead of feeling rejuvenated and energized and that's why Prolon by El Nutra was created it is a total game changer and right now they are offering Toast listeners 15% off their five day nutrition program at prolonlife.com slash toast that's P-R-O-L-O-N life.com slash toast for the special offer prolonlife.com slash T-O-A-S-T. Today's episode is also brought to you by Manscaped. Today we're transforming our hair care routine with an exciting new release from Manscaped. It's not just about razors and male grooming anymore, ladies. Manscaped has finally come out with a product that we can all use. So allow us to introduce you to the Scalp Buffer, a must-have for your scalp's self-care routine. I feel like not enough people take care of their scalp. Not me. I'm a scalp girl, especially like when I get facials or massages. I always make sure to have them include my scalp. It stimulates hair growth, like things like that. Taking care of your hair follicles like as you get older is really important. And I love that Manscaped is getting into this. So they have a thick silicone bristle that are 100% antibacterial, helping your scalp stay clean and refreshed by gently exfoliating away dry skin and product buildup. So if you use heat on your hair, hairspray, oil, serums, whatever it is, those are great, but they do cause product buildup. And a lot of people don't know that they need to like really exfoliate their scalp the same way you exfoliate your skin. So the coolest feature is that it's designed to stimulate blood flow to your hair follicles. Increasing uh, the blood flow means healthier hair. It can stimulate hair growth. Um, a lot of us also, I learned a couple of years ago, aren't washing our hair correctly. It's not just like about lathering like your hair. It's really about lathering your scalp because health and cleanliness really start at the scalp for your hair. Also just feels really good. It's like the best feeling in the world. After a long day using it feels like a mini spa treatment. Plus the handy hanging notch makes it effortly, effortlessly stored. You hang it up and it's ready for the next shower. The scalp buffer from Manscaped is your scalp's new best friend. So treat your scalp to some well-deserved self-care with the scalp buffer and get 20% off as always and free shipping with our code toast at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with code T-O-A-S-T at manscaped.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Quince. It's that time of year where we're shifting our wardrobes from summer to fall and it's a challenge. Luckily, Quince offers timeless and high quality items that we adore, ensuring our wardrobe stays fresh and that we don't blow our budget. So they've got really high quality items at Quince for prices that might surprise you, like cashmere sweaters from $50, pants for every occasion, washable silk tops, and so much more. The best part about Quince is that all of their items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. They do that by partnering directly with top factories. Quince is cutting out the cost of the middleman and passing the savings on to you. Quince only works with top factories. They use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and pre premium fabrics and finishes which we love I have I feel like Quince is kind of getting really popular now do you feel that way too I feel like we've been working with them for a while but recently I've been getting so many questions about like the Quince offer mm -hmm. um so yeah if you're a toaster like stay winning and knowing things before everybody else so many of my most beloved items cardigans pants cashmere sweaters are from Quince they're the perfect items for building a capsule wardrobe and I am now like I'm buying less items these days but better items and Quince is the perfect place to do that so make switching seasons a breeze with Quince's high quality closet essentials just go to quince.com slash toast for free shipping on your order and 365 Five day returns. That's Q U I N C E dot com slash toast to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash toast. Thank you, Seth Turt. Thank you, Jax, and thank you, Quince, for sponsoring today's episode. Our first story in two parts, a little Britney news. Britney is making news as she disses Sabrina Carpenter's oh, yeah. weird VMA performance. So Britney took to her Instagram to give a little recap on the VMAs. Very, very toasty of her. She said, yeah. quote, I didn't watch the VMAs, but I did see stuff on my phone from YouTube of Sabrina Carpenter. She said, why is she kissing an alien on stage? She emphasized that she does adore Sabrina and loves her to death, but she was still perplexed by this, uh, Sabrina's decision to make out with an alien halfway through her performance. She said, I didn't understand that part. Why didn't she kiss a girl? That was weird. Then later in the video, she said she was surprised to hear Sabrina pay okay, homage. I think the alien was a girl, but sorry. Continue. I think the alien was a girl too, but more on that in a moment. More on that later. <laughs> So she also, Brittany was excited because she said, this Sabrina girl said my name on the red carpet and I thought that was kind of cool. I forget I'm famous sometimes. LOL. I feel like the VMAs were like, we were, oh, so this is actually a great segue. Jackie and I yesterday posted an episode on Patreon, video and audio episode, where we did like a deep dive into the VMAs, like the biggest moments in, in VMA history. There are so many. And like, if we were doing the toast at that time, we gave our recaps of like yeah. what we would have said. And then also the impact on the culture, like Taylor and Kanye, like there are actually so many. It was such a we good episode. Also I like actually learned a lot. We discovered so many new iconic VMA moments that like kind of don't get enough shine and we were seriously not okay. So definitely check that out on Patreon. But yes, what we learned from the Patreon is like I feel like Britney and the VMAs like 
are one big circle. Same for Madonna, but yep. Britney really was like the poster child of the VMAs for so many years, which is why so many of the new pop girlies like reference her a lot. So to Kate hear McCray. her take on the VMAs, and it's funny because she's watching, she's talking as if like she's never been there before. And I think she forgets um, how big she is a part of it. Cause she also said in her video, I'm a mom, I'm kind of old, but that was kind of cool. This Sabrina girl, Carpenter, thanks. That's cool, she made me cool. It's like, no, you were the coolest. She's trying to be like you. Uh, Brittany literally coming for our next with these Instagram stories, like pop culture commentating. Mm -hmm. um, now I think like, if this were anyone else, you would hear this and be offended, right? Like somebody who Sabrina Carpenter like looks up to pop girl being like, oh, this was weird. But of course there are allowances for Britney and in her own sort of strange way, overall, this was a compliment. It was, and honestly, like on its face, kissing an alien is weird. Like that is not for even sure. a subjective statement. Like that is factual. I mean, I, I'm with Britney. Up until yesterday, I didn't realize it was a reference to like the Moon Man VMA saga. Well, Britney would know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, would she? I well, I would I would think so. But yeah, no, it is weird to kiss an alien, which is why she did it. Right. Like look at us. We're talking about it days later. Yeah, like it's not expected. So I feel like Britney was on the nose with that. Yeah, I think we should have Britney on once a week to do like Britney like that's the way Britney sees it. <laughs> I think like actually like e news or Entertainment Tonight like should have a segment where Britney does pop culture. Like, yeah, people will lose their jobs and people will be offended, but like, where's no, the No, this is the kind of unfiltered take we need, right? I feel like we're always talking about how like, we can't even, the culture is so sensitive. Something like Fashion Police can't even exist anymore because criticizing someone's outfit is considered mean now. Yeah. Um, and Britney just like actually lives on a planet all of her own and she doesn't give a flying fuck. So you would you need someone like that. We don't have the Joan, like the people like that don't exist anymore. Yeah. We need Britney, someone who's just really so on their own level. To come and call it like she sees it. Also though, yeah. some other Britney news that was very exciting. Um, however, a little bit confusing because her youngest son, Jaden, just turned 18. So it was reported that she will now no longer be paying child support to Kevin Federline. However, she actually is still paying child support because um, there is a clause in their agreement that the child support payments for Jaden cease when he either turns 18 or when he graduates from high school, whichever is later. And so he's still in high school. Oh. He's set to graduate in November. So it, the payments would end then. This is where, like the Britney folks and I, we we part ways. There, is, people hate Kevin Federline. They call him a couch potato. He hasn't worked in years, and he just collects <laughs> Britney's checks. Yeah, and lives off and, the, the land. And I want to say that is one hundred percent true, but not enough is said for the fact that like that man, those kids live with him full time. He sends them to school. He raised them. Yeah, on Britney's dime, and he doesn't work. But you know when when Britney was not available and incapacitated and unable to do her motherly duties, like. He was the dad, he was the person who stepped up. So you know what, you're never really gonna catch me clowning on him. Like, yeah, literally hasn't worked a day in his life. Goals. Yeah, not, no, like, and like the important not the thing. ideal, but just like Tom D'Agostino only dates women his own age, Kevin Federline is there for his children. The bar is in hell for men in Hollywood. And I wanna say like, sorry, Kevin Federline is passing the Bechdel test for me. Like, and it says a lot that those kids like chose to live with him. And just like Dave Grohl said that he's going to say hi to his new baby sometimes. Like, <laughs> Kevin. The bar is in hell. Kevin Federline took Britney's money and gave some to the kids. Yeah. Yeah, maybe not all of it. <laughs> so, by the way, he gets um, $20,000. Well, it was $20,000 a month in child support. And then it was doubled in 2018 to $40,000 a month because they were in his care most of the time. It wasn't like joint custody. But now it's back to $20,000 a month. Like, okay. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, no, I think we can all agree, like, Kevin Federline, like, is a bum, you know? Yeah, but I feel Bum's like, for, gonna bum. like, for a lot of women, like, goals. He's a bum, not, for sure. Not to be with Kevin Federline, but to be Kevin Federline. Of course, he's a 50s housewife. I know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Holding space for the fact that Kevin Federline is a bum, while uh -huh. also being a present father. He is a committed dad and like for me those kids like needing stability and they've found it in Kevin Federline. Sorry, I the free Britney people, they lose me here. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's celebrating like he's running out of money. You know what? Actually, that's not good. Well, now, no, now that they're 18 once they graduate from high school, like they could 
get a job. Yeah, they can, but like they're not financially independent. No, or if they go to college, I'm sure she would be paying for college. And then within college, like everything is mostly paid for room and board and books. Actually, yeah. books sold separately. Now that's a crock. Oh, by the way, the fucking books in college. Books. Books in college. If you ever got away with like not buying a book in college. Rockefeller. And, like, I, yeah, no. And like you like found a couple of pages like that you needed online or and then like photocopied someone else. Like, you know, like that was seriously, that was a class in and of itself. The, the grit and determination that you learned really could take you places in the real world. Yeah. I'm going through that right now, trying to find some new good cookbooks. I'm like looking for samples because oh, I, I I need to see the inside of the cookbook to know if it's the right cookbook for me. Like, what kind of recipes? Money you go to a bookstore. What kind of business you run in? I right. might actually go. What to kind the of bookstore. business y'all in? <laughs> I might actually go to the bookstore or the library to get a little sample. Yeah. Because I want to know, like, what's your cuisine? Because a lot of these cookbooks, like, cook with ingredients I don't personally like. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, not gonna. I'm not gonna make fun of any ingredient right now because you might like it. But yeah. I like the cl- a couple classic cuisines. Back to Kevin Federline. He may be a bum, but he's a bum that we can count on. If he's getting paid 20K a month minimum. Yeah. Period. So that's what's new with Brittany. I'm um, wishing her well. Keep the hot takes coming. We need that in this culture. Like a little bit, a couple of hearts truths. And yeah, we love it. And I feel like Sabrina loved it too. Sabrina's like so not serious. I think she's probably geeking over the fact that like Brittany saw her performance, period. 100%. Our next story is some more father of the year news. Um, Dave Grohl says that the woman's viral post about his love child is fake after admitting that he cheated on his wife. So did you see this post going around of a baby girl? Someone like claimed that he, that, that yeah. she was, no, I didn't see that. That's, seriously, this woman saw an opportunity and took it. So I love someone it. made an account called Valerie Grayston with like a, a sweet baby. Oh my God, I thought you were gonna say Valerie Grohl. No, no, wait, wait, with a sweet like baby hands photo saying, my sweet Roxy Junie Grohl being your mama. <laughs> Has already, but it's like it, the picture. It looks exactly like what Dave Grohl's mistress or yeah. any woman like who just had a baby would post with this being your uh, Roxy June Junie Grohl. Being Junie. your mama has already been the most incredible experience of my life. It is so funny to read this now, knowing that it's fake. Because for a while, like people weren't sure. Every day, I fall, fall more in love with you in this new role. Your daddy was by my side. <laughs> the entire pregnancy making sure we were both taken care of and i'm so grateful for his love and support i'm sorry this is so crazy that someone no, wrote it, this it is really funny now you're right like reading it is better knowing that it's not true because like you could see the intent behind some of the words <laughs> but like giving your love child the like deadbeat dad's last name is so crazy Grohl, roxy juni Grohl, juni cortez Grohl. cortez she's such a millennial yeah um p.s roxy every time i look at you i see so much of your dad in your face it's like it's like a little reflection of him in the tiniest most beautiful way i just want to say so dave's team put out a statement to tmz um that the child in the picture was not his child and that this is fake but i just like want to hold space for the possibility the potential. that it's real i feel see, like this is why this is why he shouldn't have shared it with us. When when we broke the news a couple of days ago, we had said, like, it's weird that he shared it with us. Like, this is something he could have, like, seriously, it must have been coming out. Yeah. Um, because when you open yourself up, like, things like this happen. It's yeah. just the culture. Also, I feel like now is a referendum on Dave Grohl. Like, people are digging into, like, everything he said in the last few weeks. I saw, like, a headline, like, Oh, Dave, he's getting the Blake Dave Lively Grohl treatment. Dave Grohl gives a, uh, an annoyed interview at Wimbledon. Like, I feel like he just gives an annoyed interview, period. But also, they're, like talking about his relationship with some like porn lady um oh a porn lady dave Grohl's relationship with alt porn goddess revealed after he welcomes baby outside of marriage he was allegedly What's once alt? spotted that i don't know he was once spotted getting cozy with this woman when he was married she does alt porn alt okay i'm looking it up yeah i guess we could just get a quick death oh my god i'm literally getting like porn hub yeah okay, that's wait. why i'm I going to wikipedia wanna. Oh, alternative porn is a shortening, uh, a subgenre of pornography that is centered around alternative subcultures like goth, hipster, emo. Okay, that's like a crazy name. So it's just like porn oh, stars with black hair and dark makeup. Yeah, yeah. that's like what I would have thought. Um, that just seemed too simplified. So um, th- like the, okay, there's literally like tits on my iPad. I have to go. Never yeah. mind. 
So now people are just like looking into everything Dave has done, which, you know, makes... I, 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 I will definitely be interested to see, you know, how far this goes. It's very much giving Blake Lively, and they took it really far. Like, they destroyed Blake Lively. Like, she'll be taking some time off for a while, and she'll come back when we've all forgotten. I don't think, I think, like, men get away with, like, being rude more, and it's like, whatever. Yeah. But I just think, like, let's not, let's compare. Like, let's see where the internet goes with Dave Grohl versus what they did with Blake Lively. Yeah, another headline, Dave Grohl called Jordan Blum, um... Who is that? I just saw her name somewhere. His future ex-wife years before cheating and welcoming a baby with Mitchus. Like a lot of people saying like things that he said in the last few years. Just stories. Jordan Blum this. is a man. That's what no, I thought. Yeah. D-Y-N. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Foo Fighter singer Dave Grohl admits father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's his wife, Jordan Blum. Oh, so she called him his, her, his future ex-wife. Ugh, I hate men who make jokes like that. Like, uh, cheers to my first wedding. Ugh. Yeah. Like, shut up. Yeah. No, those jokes, like, are, like, indicative. Like, he's definitely the worst husband ever. But the thing is, not my problem. Not my circus, not my monkeys. Totally. Well, are you ready for our next story? Number three? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something interesting. Tom Cruise's payday for his 2024 Paris Olympic stunt is revealed. Mm -hmm. Did you see? I feel like... It's either like an insane amount or a free. It was free. <gasps> Tom Cruise pulled off his epic Hollywood stunt at the Paris Olympics for free. The president and chairman of the 2028 Games in LA raved about Tom's participation during uh, the CNBCX boardroom game plan panel at Fairmont Miramar. I don't give a shit. Whatever that is. <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> Are you going to tell me like his hotel number too? That is so funny. She doesn't care. What floor is he on? TMI. We really don't give a shit. <laughs> Anyways, this person named Casey, unclear if it's a man or a woman, said he finished filming Mission Impossible at 6 p.m. in London, got right on a plane. He landed in L.A. at 4 a.m. and filmed the scene where he pills, pulls onto a military plane. This person raved that every step of the way, Cruz got more involved and more engaged and ultimately did the pre-tape stunt for free. We're like, well, there's no way we're going to get this. We're going to get four hours of filming time. We'll do the thing with the Hollywood sign. He'll hand the thing off and he's done. And maybe we'll get the other stuff and the rest will just be a stunt double. But five minutes into the presentation, he said, I'm in, but I'm only doing it if I get to do everything. Classic Tommy. There is a concerted effort, and I honestly feel like you're a part of it, to get me to like Tom Cruise. I'm part Cruise. of Big Tom. You, you literally are. I am not buying it. I'm part of Little Tom. Like, cool. And the thing is, like, why on earth would you get paid for this? You're representing your country. Like, I And we're saw, supposed to think he's, like, some sort of hero. Please, this person's a Scientologist. Just I don't like when my interest in Tom Cruise was waning, I, I was targeted another stunt video of his where he did his own oh. stunt. Did I send it to you of him, like, jumping up the pole with his hands backwards? If you did, I ignored it. Like, I'm seriously not looking to get infiltrated with Tom Cruise content. Because like, to me, like, all I hear on repeat in my life, Tom Cruise does his own stunts, Tom Cruise does his own stunts. Like, I'm like, that doesn't mean anything to me. I, I don't watch his movies, so, like... Right. But then when I see, like, videos of the stunts that he's doing, knowing, like, there's no double, he's going for it, I am impressed. I'm impressed yeah. by the statement, Tom Cruise does his own stunts. Now, maybe it's, like, me being negative, because you hear Tom Cruise does his own stunts, and you say, wow, that's amazing. I hear, oh, he's putting stunt doubles out of work. He's, like, needlessly making the insurance for a movie way more expensive. He's putting people out of work, but he's also, like, putting himself in danger, risking the whole project. Like, you're not a professional stuntman. I guess at this I think point at this he probably point he is. is. But I don't know. I just, like, I... They can never make me like him. And they are... And when I say they, I am including you... They are trying extremely hard. The Olympic Committee, like he, obviously somebody high up at the Olympic Committee is also a Scientologist. Because oh, I feel sure. like, mark my words, like LA 28, we're going to have a lot of like Scientology really coding. power. Oh my God. Do you see like a little Scientology conspiracy theory about Sabrina Carpenter? No. Her so auntie we, is a Scientologist, right? Yeah. So we talked about her auntie. She's not a Nepo kid. I don't, actually, maybe she is, but her auntie is the voice of Bart Simpson. She's not anyone you guys would like know or ever hear of, but she's like an incredibly powerful woman in Hollywood and very successful. Um, and she's also a Scientologist. And I think there's a lot of pressure on the Scientology community to her auntie to get Sabrina to involved. Recruit because Sabrina. Sabrina has a lot of power with the youth right now. And I think definitely Gen Z is. Gen Z has grown up like watching those documentaries. You can't fool Gen Z into, into joining Scientology. So I think Sabrina would be a huge get for them. So what's the theory? That the auntie is like Working on nefarious. Sabrina? Mm -hmm. Interesting. I don't think it'll go that way. Yeah, no, I don't think so either. 
But yeah, I could definitely see LA 2028 Olympics, like having a Scientological sprinkle, but like, wouldn't that also be like reflective of the city? You know, everyone, every city. So it is their culture. Every city's like bringing what they're, what they're known for, their little special thing. The thing why I don't think Sabrina is susceptible to joining Scientology is because a lot of people, and I think the perfect example is like John Travolta, who was like, you know, having a little bit of success as an actor, but the second he joined Scientology, he got booked like on everything. The timing was, it had nothing to do with Scientology, but he believed that it did. And like now, I think that happens a lot where like people join and then immediately get success. And Sabrina's having this otherworldly success without it. So she's not a believer. What if she actually became a Scientologist six months ago? Well, then that would be a flaw in, in my theory for sure. Yeah, I don't see that for her. Me neither. She really can't be tied down by organized religion. No, no. No. Are you ready for our next story? Um, mm -hmm. Which is um, couples we ship, would ship news. Couples we would ship? Couples we would ship. So a hypothetical ship. Just listen. Okay. Chet Hanks reveals he had dinner with Kim Zolciak after Surreal Life would move to Georgia to date Kim Zolciak. So meeting Wait, Kim by Zolciak. the way. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, ship. Wood ship. Second of all, you're telling me Chet Hanks doesn't look like Croy Bierman? No, no, no. Because she's a type. Claudia, like, this is all making sense. So the two of them. Chet Hanks looks like he could be KJ's father. Claudia, and Cash. the two of them were on a set of, you know, some reality. They were on a reality show. Yes, I knew that. show called The Surreal Life Villa of Secrets. And Chet Hanks spoke to, um, page six on the MTV VMA red carpet and he said meeting Kim Zelsiak was a highlight for Chet and that he's open to dating her so he said one of the best moments of my life was meeting Kim Zolciak. he told uh, page six at the VMAs he shared that he and Kim have kept in touch since the reality show wrapped filming and he even joined her and her girlfriends out for dinner in LA recently he claimed that however sense. that he and Kim are just really good friends adding with a coy laugh whether when he was asked about if they're friends with benefits the feelings are mutual as Kim has actually said that he's a nice guy and smile smiled when paparazzi mentioned his name he also said that he would absolutely move in order to date Kim he would move to Atlanta yeah because you know they're gonna have to take Kim Dolciak's cold dead body out of that house and he, she is not leaving he lives in Nashville right now he said so it's not that far not too far and you know Brielle's been spending a lot of time in Nashville I believe that's where her fiance is based okay obsessed first of all I didn't know that this was a couple like that I needed right. until you just put it right in front of me like first of all they actually look so similar like they could be brother and sister like and that's how you know it's a good couple like this was how obsessed. I felt about like Aurora and Paul Berman like I never thought of them together no. this but is how they I make felt so much sense about like Prince William and Catherine of Wales like it's giving timeless it's giving a great love I I also think like Kim Zolciak needs access to a big trust fund. She oh. lives a very expensive lifestyle and I don't feel like working is her favorite thing, you know? Yeah. I think she likes influencing She's like, like a showing Kevin off line. showing off her nice things, yeah. But I don't know if like being a business owner is like what she would choose if she had to. So marrying someone with access to that like Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson are two of the wealthiest people in Hollywood. People don't even realize. First of all, Toy Story. Second of all, they have like a huge production company. Like some of the biggest, they're producers on My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Like they are, they have their hands in everything. And he has been famous forever. Yeah. And how many kids they have? Like two or three? I don't know. Chad is so the only like, one who stands out. But I do think of it's course. like, when I think of like red carpet photos of their family, like I do think there's two others, not including Chad. Let me Chet. look it up. I feel like there's one other. Tom Hanks' children. Three. Col oh, no, four, excuse me. Oh, right. That Colin from... Um Classic. House Bunny. So the famous ones are Chester and Colin. Chester. Chester, Chester is his real name, but we call him Chet. Oh, I'm like, Which, okay, Chester is Chet. Great. Then there's Truman. We need to talk about Rita Wilson and Tom and how they named their kids. I feel like they really kind of did really beautifully. Like, they went old school. Their daughter's name is Elizabeth. Gargi. Truman, Chester, and Colin. Like, very old world. Lovely. And now, obviously, like we think of Chet as you know, <laughs> but Chester is beautiful. Oh, so Elizabeth um, and Colin are not Rita's. They are from a previous marriage. He oh. was married to Samantha Luz. Hmm. But so Rita, Truman and Chet. Chet belongs to Rita. Yeah, her her finest accomplishment. Um. 
I love that. And also, like, of course, I do think Chet and Kim make a lot of sense for the reasons that we established. But, like, I could also we, see Kim at, at family dinner. And I could also see her, like, kind like going for Tom. No, 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 no. I think that if she once she got in the family, she would not fuck it up. But I could see her and Rita, like, definitely kikiing at the holidays. Oh, like, no. I see her and Tom kiki a little too yeah, much. Kiki. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, you're making it nefarious and gross. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. no. I, that makes it more age appropriate, by the way. Oh, yeah. What is the age gap here? Actually, I, like I when... guess Kim is... Um, she's younger she's than one you of the, think. She's 46. Chet is 34. And then Tom is like 60 plus, right? Yeah, I want to say like 64. 68. Yeah, so she's closer in age to Chet. She is. And you know what? We also don't give, don't give Tom Hanks enough credit for, you know... For birthing Chet. <laughs> Well, of course. It's like literally his greatest accomplishment. No, for um, like staying married to a woman his own age. Now, there are a lot of rumors about Tom Hanks. I feel like the blind items like love to pin all of the wrongdoings in Hollywood on Tom. He's a big one. I don't know if we need to be giving you <laughs> credit. I'm just saying, for what I know, like not based on the blinds, like he's married to a woman his own age and like that's admirable. It is. I guess. It's giving Tom D'Agostino. It is. No, but it's really not because like... Yeah, Tom Tagasino doesn't have his name in the blinds like that. Sullied, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Tom Hanks was Sully. And that is a turtle. Yeah, so at least he always gave us that. We'll always yeah. have Sully. Before we dive into the fifth story and Queenie and Weenie of the Week, is it okay if I let you know that Queenie and Weenie of the Week and the fifth story are brought to you by Oak Essentials? It is very much okay. Ugh, what? Oh, what a relief it is. So ladies, if you're looking for that glazed donut glass-like skin, then Oak Essentials Moisture Rich Balm will lock in the most glowing hydrated skin for you. This luxurious balm is so effective, you might just ditch your makeup altogether. So with swirly summers having us in the streets, the heat, soaking in the sun, now heading into Gargi Pargy Fall, we need to ensure that our skin stays hydrated. Our body care is on point, and Oak Essentials is going to ensure that your summer glow lasts all year. So that Moisture Rich Balm is unlike any other moisture or moisturizer you've ever tried. Its silky smooth texture will melt effortlessly into your skin, providing a luminous radiance that's truly unmatched. Get ready for a flood of compliments. I love putting it on under my makeup. I think the skincare you do before your makeup is going to like really ensure that your makeup will last all day, look glowy, not like start peeling off and getting crusty. They also have the Dew Body Oil. So skincare obviously doesn't stop at your face. You cannot forget about your body, especially like your decolletage area. That's how like you really can show your age. If you're not bringing your skincare all the way down or doing body care down to your chest like and neck, you might regret it in a few years' time. So the Oak Essentials Dew Body Oil will help you unlock your best, most hydrated skin year-round. This lightweight, fast-absorbing body oil enhances tone and texture, delivering a stunning head-to-toe glow without any greasy residue. So say hello to clean, spa-quality skincare essentials that deliver a moisture-rich glow. Toasters are going to get 15% off their first order when you use promo code TOAST15 at checkout. That's 15% off your first order at O-A-K-E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A-L-S dot com, promo code TOAST15. Go ahead and treat yourself. Get your best radiant skin this fall with Oak Essentials. Today's episode is also brought to you by Open Phone. One of the most common mistakes that business owners make is using their personal devices for business. But you can't be limited to just your cell phone and notes app to get your work done. With Open Phone, you can stay connected while AI features help you keep your business on track. So Open Phone is the number one business phone system made for modern businesses. They empower your business to succeed by streamlining client communications and fostering teamwork with a diverse set of features. Open Phone works through an app on your phone or your computer and integrates with HubSpot and hundreds of other systems. They use AI-powered call transcripts and summaries so you can have a summary of your phone call with action items right when you hang up. No more note-taking or forgotten to-dos. Like, this is what AI was meant to do. Like, seriously, make our lives easier. Like, note-taking is a thing of the past. Businesses love Open Phone because it's easy to manage, collaborative, customizable, and flexible to meet all your business's needs. It is the number one rated business phone for customer satisfaction with over 1,700 reviews, and voted best in usability, easiest setup, most implemented, most implementable, and easiest admin. And right now, Open Phone is offering 20% off your first six months when you go to openphone.com slash toast. That's O-P-E-N-P-H-O-N-E dot com slash toast for 20% off six months. That's openphone.com slash toast. And if you have existing numbers with another service, Open Phone will port them over at no extra charge, which is fabulous. So O-P-E-N-P-H-O-N-E dot com slash T-O-A-S-T for 20% off six months. Today's episode is also brought to you by Lumi and their whole body deodorant. So Lumi sort of invented the product that I wished to have created. So it's whole body deodorant. It's safe to use anywhere on your body. Now, obviously deodorant's an amazing thing, right? But I think a lot of us like have other issues when it comes to sweating, moisture, fragrance. There's some of us have like, you know, 
rolls, flaps, areas just that go beyond the need for, for traditional deodorant. And OB, uh, OB, Lumi was created by an OBGYN who saw firsthand how normal BO was and how it was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. So Lumi whole body deodorant is clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours. The whole body deodorant also has sweat control. So the same outrageously effective whole body deodorant that you love with the bonus of sweat control. It's now available in the cream tube with 72 hour odor and sweat control. It's pH balanced. So it's safe to use in your nether regions. I think for a lot of people, we always think like, oh, it'd be great to have deodorant for down there. Because it was created by an OBGYN, it's safe to use down there. It's pH balanced. It's also baking soda free and it's free of parabens. You can choose from a variety of really fabulous scents like classic uh, clean tangerine, a lavender sage, toasted coconut. I feel like scents for deodorant is really personal. Um, and I love that they have really, really good scents. So the Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like a mini body wash, deodorant wipes, and free shipping. So as a special offer for our listeners, new customers are going to get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals over 40% off their starter pack. Use code TOAST for 15% off your first purchase at LumiDeodorant.com. That's code TOAST at L-U-M-E Deodorant.com. Code TOAST, LumiDeodorant.com. Thank you, Claudia. You're welcome. Our fifth and final story is actually another potential couple news, and it's one of my favorite tropes, which is Jenna Bush Hager trying to set up Hoda with celebrity guests who come through the Today Show. Queen. And this week, Jenna Bush Hager is trying to set up Hoda with Lenny Kravitz after they hold hands on the Today Show. I just want to say... I see it. I see it. Jenna Bochega is not giving up on her dreams of making a romance between Hoda and Lenny a reality. A day after performing at the VMAs, he went on the Today Show to perform some of his beloved hits. While Wait, by the way, we didn't even recap his performance. It was really amazing. Did I see it? Oh, maybe not. I think maybe I missed it. Recap it. It was pretty stellar. And I love that like everybody loves Lenny Kravitz. Like young people, old people, and then also everyone in the audience. And you really forget, like, because if you were to ask me, like, what is Lenny Kravitz saying? I'd be like, I don't know. Um, he's always dad. But then you hear the song, and you're like, oh, yeah, this classic tune. Yeah, classic tune. He crushed it. He should have performed with Katy Perry like they did at the Super Bowl. No, I don't think that he should have. I think it was good him by himself. Like, no, let Katy Perry. She went to perform one of her songs, and I've watched her Super Bowl performance so much that, like, I was like, where's Lenny? Where's Lenny right. on the beat? I didn't realize he was yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, while he was performing, um, Hoda was seemingly the most excited as she held his hand while walking onto the Today Show Plaza. Later, Jenna uh, teased Hoda for dressing up in a cool leather studded suit for Lenny Kravitz Day. Hoda said, yes, I am. This is new, this little top. I decided if, that if you're going to have Lenny Kravitz on the plaza, who, by the way, is he not the epitome of all of the things? He's so kind and he's very hot. Jenna added that he's also very talented. So Jenna would not let this go, asking if... Um, Lenny is interested in love in this new chapter. Are you looking for love? She said. And he said, that's interesting. I mean, always. And Jenna said, well, I know the electric lady. If you want her number, she's right here. Like, everybody needs a wing woman like Jenna Machaker. has Lenny Kravitz dated? Lisa Bonet. Of course. But like, and Lisa is Zoe's mom, right? Yeah. Kylie Minogue. Hmm. Vanessa Paradis. Classic. You know who that is, Johnny right? Depp's ex-wife. You see Johnny Depp got new teeth? I heard that Johnny Depp got new teeth, but I didn't see them. Because I said it to you as a story. I guess Johnny Depp's teeth are not as important as Jenna Bushager. But he got new teeth. Let me tell you, he looks so hot. Well, he got the teeth like last week, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see. I feel like... Because do you remember when his teeth went viral? They literally looked like George Washington, like wooden teeth. Yeah. I he feel obviously like has lived a life of just like partying, smoking cigarettes, and eating ice cream. And he got new teeth. Do you ever see those videos, those pictures of babies that people like will Photoshop their newborn um, baby yeah. to have like a full yeah. set of teeth? Yeah. And I, seriously, it's the, one of the funniest things to me. Yeah. That is what I imagine when I think of like Johnny Depp with a new rack, like missed, well, like out of place, great set of teeth. What are they doing I, on this baby? No, it was time. And I have to imagine that means he's getting more work as an actor because like if you have teeth like that, you obviously don't care about. I disagree. I feel like you need teeth like that if you want to be in any sort of period piece. Like the way that people have like. But I don't think he wants to be in only period pieces. No, but you can always he's make your teeth like. in period. Like really when you think about like even Pirates of the Caribbean is technically a period piece. Like he's never playing like a modern businessman. I guess. But I think it's better to have like nice looking teeth that you can make look ugly for a movie versus like ugly teeth that you can't make look nice. 
I guess. But yeah, I don't need to see your chompers in the 17th century. Like get those I'm wooden sorry. teeth out or go home. We're getting, we're getting, that is so true. Veneers in Downton Abbey, like get out of here. <laughs> You know who else he dated? First of all, so many people that we need to go through every single one of them, but Natalie and Bruglia. Nothing's fine, I'm torn. I'm, I'm all out of faith. Such a good song. So good. Also, Adriana Lima. Hmm. Also, Nicole Kidman. So what I'm sensing is he really doesn't have a type. He likes like a beautiful, dynamic yeah. woman. I like that. Yeah. And yeah, and it's almost like he, and they're all beautiful, but it sounds like he like look, is looking for somebody who's beautiful on the inside. Yeah, because all of them are really, well, he likes an artist. Yeah. And he likes a good artist too, you know? He's not like, just Hoda, like. Hoda is a yapper. And not every man like can, can really stomach being with a yapper. We are a unique blend. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really important. I think it's good to have somebody like JBH in her corner, like advocating because Women who are yappers, like we're a different breed and, and we need a, a certain amount of, we need a special type of guy. It can't just be anyone. It's true, but like I yap for a living, right? But in my personal life, like I'm not, not much a of a yapper. Per, I do think like Hoda is more akin to you where she's just like Hoda everywhere she goes, but there's a chance like what, privately, like she kind of is done talking. No way. Yeah, but there's Hoda's no way. a yapper. I agree with you, like, but I'm just saying. Like, you have to think about it. Hoda sat next to Kathy Lee Gifford for 15 years. Like, she's a yapper. Yeah. Some things are just eternal. Yeah. So she needs, like, someone who can absorb all that yapping. Yeah. It's a lot. So I actually don't know if Lenny Kravitz is the one, but I do I, ship. I see, I, I see the vision, but I just, I don't think it's, it's right. But I love this project of, like, set Hoda up with the famous guest on the show. Yes, but we also need to be, we don't want Hoda to like fall in love with somebody who lives somewhere else and leave the show. She needs somebody quintessentially New York. Lenny Kravitz is not. I feel like Tom remember D'Agostino. he had that RV. Liter literally, he dates age appropriate women in New York. She needs to go to some of those conventions with Bethany. Yeah, as a plus one, yeah. Well, actually she could probably go she, like on yeah. her own accord. Yeah, but that's like where the businessmen go. Yeah. Anyways, Hoda finding love, like she needs a reality show. Literally, like Bethany Ever After. Like, <laughs> she needs need like that. like the Bachelorette, Golden Bachelor. The Golden Bachelorette. Yeah. Okay, so those are the fast five stories. Before we wrap up today's episode, every Friday, Jack and I love to play a little game that we call Queenie and Weenie of the Week, where we give out an award to somebody who acted like a queenie this week and somebody who acted like a weenie this week. Now, keep in mind, it's not that serious. It's a seven-day title. One day you can be queenie, and the next day you can be weenie. It's really not a big deal. So don't get down if you find yourself being nominated for Weenie of the Week one week, okay? Mm -hmm. My Queenie of the Week there were a lot of queenies this week because a lot was happening this week, but someone who I just think had such a great week, I'm so proud of her, and as someone who has been streaming skin since day one, I'm proud to say, my queenie is Sabrina. Like, the VMAs were the Sabrina MAs, and she crushed it, and I'm very happy for her. I agree. It's kind of been, like, queenie of the year for... for if, maybe at the end of the year, we should do who, like, Ooh. what year. It just, I like that. Remember. Okay, I will. My Queenie of the Week, like I said, I'm having a very male-dominated Queenie and Weenie of the Week this week. Mine is John Bon Jovi, like out here mm, saving lives really while good. also making music videos and not being like a schnorra about it, like not doing media, like, yeah, look what I did. I saved a life. Hey, like, look at me. Yeah. We wouldn't have even known this if that CCTV footage wasn't leaked. Like he's not like a, like a annoying like that. So all elements, in addition to obviously the big one, like saving someone's life, huge. Love that. Then yeah. my weenie of the week is actually a tie, but they're coming from the same place. So I want to give it to both of them. And I'll start with the more serious one, which is Zach from Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Like utmost weenie behavior. I think like everybody is just like seeing this and he is the weenie for like very good, serious reasons. But then like my more fun weenie is Whitney from Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Um, you know, when it was Once just you like- discovered. When it was just like girly swirly drama. One, when I discovered the RSV video, which like made things really hard for me, but I have been enjoying some of her other content. So like, I'm, I'm trying to give grace because I can see how she ended up making that video. Like I could see how things got too far for her, but she, her behavior on the show, just like, being like such a victim and such a mean girl, like cackling the fruity pebbles, while also like if you want to be like that mean bitch. I watched the fruity pebbles last if night. If you want to be a mean bitch, like be it all the way. Then don't like start crying and being like, what was me when like anyone tries to have a conversation with you? Like that's not cool. No, also that's being actually like the very mean. Weenie. 
being the mean bitch while also being like very pious and religious and looking down on other people. Everybody knows like truly religious people are very welcoming of others. Like that's what yeah. and, and, that's any what religion the good book says. In any religion, that's what like the Lord, whatever your Lord is, would teach you like to accept all as they come and like not be judgmental just because like I keep Shabbat and you don't. Like so she's kind of like the worst Mormon ever cuz I don't know the Book of Mormon, but I know it probably preaches kindness and, and and grace, right? Yes, and then also she did something that I watched last night that really, really bothered me because right after that whole thing with Jen and Zach and the things that he said to her, she wasn't on the trip, but her husband was talking to one of the guys and he found out what happened on the trip and he told Whitney, like, oh my gosh, Jen, like, she got reamed out by her husband. He called her a terrible mother, said he was going to take the kids um, and move to his mom's house. And Whitney was like, well, I don't care. She was like, and I believe that because she's a bad friend. Oh, literally, like, I, I, I'm watching this like 10 months later as someone who doesn't even know these people have a pit in my stomach and pit. you're there just doing arts and crafts with your daughter. Like, don't give one shred of a shit of like, what this girl who you were at her birth, your baby birthing blessing Crying. a few weeks ago, this Crying. girl didn't do anything to you. Uh, Whitney's mad because she unfollowed all the girls on Instagram, including Jen. And then nobody called her to find out what was going on with her. Like after she unfollowed them. Like that's classic right. Whitney. So that's just like textbook weenie. Agreed. Textbook. Now I was split on where to give my weenie, but I think I'll stick with the male rocker genre. It's Dave Grohl. Um, obviously cheating on your wife and like not even being smart about it, right? Like using a condom. Like you're literally dumb. Mm -hmm. dummy of the week and like when you're out here like having skeletons in your closet and then weeks months maybe no weeks ago you're like out here pointing fingers at others like making rude comments about other artists taylor swift like that's weenie behavior knowing what you've got going on right, right? so love it weenie ah. weenie behavior now it's a seven day title so dave girl might be my queenie next week let's say he you know I actually does, thought we does might a have benefit had... concert for the hostages or something, you know? Queenie. Right. Queenie behavior. It was also, I almost made Lindsay Hubbard our Queenie of the Week because she was like our, our first guest back. And we literally did had her on because we've literally made her Queenie of the Week four weeks in a row. But it's enough. Yeah, it would have been full circle to have her be Queenie again. Yeah. So that's our show. That's, that's our week. 37th week. Big 37. The big 37. Should we get like a like a calendar or just like a countdown? We need like a lot of things. We need I know. the day of the week, of course. of course. We need like the number of days in the work week this week. Like is it yep. day one of four or two of five? Right. Right we, now we're five of five. We need the week number of the year. Five slash five slash 37. And then we need what number episode this is. Yeah. I think this is like our 170 something episode of the year. Of, oh, I, of all time, it's like our uh, 1300, 1300 or something. something. Yeah. We need to count because we're going to get to a milestone soon and we should like throw a party. I don't know. We love to just find little reasons celebrate to celebrate. Celebrate minutia. We love to celebrate small things and forget to celebrate big things. That was that's classic us. Well, that's our show classically in a low key sense, of course. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Chosen Money. Oh, I just want to say update on this pillow. Incredible. Send me the link. Apparently, I, I used it backwards yesterday, and I still felt like it worked. But I like mean, seriously, I'm broken. you know when we, Jackie, yeah. you know when we get up from the show, I'm always like, Ugh, it takes me like thirty yeah. seconds up to. No, that's where look, I'm at look, right look now. Look at me. Send me the link. A bitch, I put it on my Amazon affiliate. Like, girl. Oh, I kind of wanted to check how many uh, clicks, because a lot of people oh, you were put asking it on your for it. Story, I'll go get. Do you it think from we'll be able story. to retire off of? Yeah, I, I don't think people link. have this issue like us, and that's the problem. No, they do, because this pillow is good for sciatica. For tailbone, people have it. Oh, that's me, sciatica, allegedly. Okay, let's see. Okay, like seriously, nobody clicks my link. We're not retiring. All right, I guess we'll be in studio on Monday. We'll see you then. <laughs> Thank Damn. you guys so much for listening. Well, you, you know what? I just money clicked, show. so maybe we could take a Great. trip. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the Toast of Monday Morning Show where we tell the fast five stories so you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe and give us a video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast and where podcasts can be found. So it's Spotify, it's Instagram, Public Radio, Outer Cast Box, all the places where you to podcast. Find us at Toast of the Five Star, be a better, beautiful setting, and wickedly talented we are. Love ya. Love ya. Bye.